right, well, we're here today and we're excited because we're getting ready to go into the second season of the Preachers of LA. And so I have the privilege of sitting between two great men of God and we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to laugh a little bit. And I might have them go at each other for a little bit. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so we're excited to have uh, Bishop Jones here with us and Bishop Ron Gibson. We're just excited. And uh, I want to know how excited you all are. I mean, this is the second season. And so we're going to switch back and forth. And Bishop Gibson, let us know what you are expecting for the second season. Well, words can't even convey the gratitude and how overjoyed I am for Oxygen to call us back for season two. It's longer. We have twice the episodes. It's stronger. The pastors are very transparent and authentic. They let the people in on some of their personal struggles. But at the end of the day, we engage our faith and we have a peaceful resolve. So I'm very excited to show the world that preachers are people with like passion. All right. Bishop? Well, I think it speaks of the success of the first season, and, uh, and, and, and actually none of us ever wanted to be in a situation where we didn't have a choice for a second season, because that's, that's, that's very critical. Uh, it shows that, uh, you know, opposite and contradistinctively to the public opinion uh, initially that it wouldn't work and that it would just be a flop because the people wouldn't, uh, wouldn't like it. But uh, it has shown that there are positives and negatives in people's thoughts towards their leaders. I think it gives us a better uh, appraisal of the people who we deal with. It opens us up certainly to understand them better. And, uh, and, and in the same way that we open up to them, uh, we are uh, aware of their reaction and their responses. So it gives us a better understanding of how they think about us. And uh, it just gives an opportunity to continue to do what we intended to do in the first place and to add to that. And uh, I think that not only have we blessed each other and helped each other, uh, even in our differences and our struggles, we have also helped the people to understand us better. And I think in opening up, we have brought people closer and uh, some farther. Even those who came closer might, in their minds, be further away, but uh, that's minuscule. The controversy makes it work. It does. It does. People like controversy. They, they really do. So b let, let me ask you this, uh, uh, Bishop Gibson. The, the first season, of course, there, was, there were those that felt as though, I don't think they should be doing this. They're supposed to be preachers. Just be a preacher and stop trying to be a movie star. Let's talk about that. Well, those type of people don't understand the word of God. The Great Commission before Jesus ascended back to heaven was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And for those type of people, they must understand that Jesus, the son of God himself, was a friend, F-R-I-E-N-D, not a friend of me, a friend to sinners. He loved Mary Magdalene. He loved Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, arch enemy to the Jews because he collected money from the oppressed people, from his people and gave it to the oppressor. He loved Matthew, who was a tax collector. Jesus loved all people. And what I want the world to know, in the mind of God, there's no super bad or sort of bad. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. Zacchaeus was short in stature, but many of us were short spiritually. So this platform of Preachers of LA, I think is a God thing. I think it's a providential uh, platform to usher in the end times because you, we're reaching the world through the medium of television, Facebook, Twitter, Internet, Instagram. So I think it's one of the, and I think Preachers of LA is the greatest reality show on television right now because it's dealing with truth from a biblical perspective, which our nation was founded upon. Judeo-Christian principles, and you have contemporary pastors whom God has blessed. People see our glory, but they don't know our story. Bishop Noel Jones has been pastoring for many years. I've been pastoring for 27 years. They look at our conspicuous consumptions, but the Bible says the laborer is worthy of his hire. So, you know, there's a lot I can say about that, but time won't allow me to. So, to make a long story short, I don't listen to my critics. I listen to my counselors. Nehemiah didn't want to come down to listen to Sam Ballard and Tobiah. So, I, I answered it for you, but normally I don't go listen to what the bloggers have to say. Because Jesus said, I don't need to know the testimony of men. I already know what's in their heart. I marched to the drumbeat of one, 
That's through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, my Father, through Jesus Christ. That's it. Wow. Bishop took me there, Bishop. Yeah, I think he, <laughs> I think he, answered, he answered for all of us, I guess. Uh, I, I think it's important to, to understand that uh, the show uh, not only helps us to promulgate what it is we believe, uh, because I am just dead set on minimizing the iconoclastic proclivities that people have towards their leaders, the pedestals they put them on, and I am one uh, that's dead set on that. But at the same time, I think that it's an opportunity uh, to, to use this media to get a message across, particularly to people who would not. And I will piggyback on Ron from this point of view, and that is the preachers of LA have set a different standard for the quote unquote reality shows, the documentary series. It has set a different standard where people can now see an amicable relationship between men who have differences and understand that we don't have to, you know, bash each other or throw things at each other or, or go into that kind of, uh, of, of, of a mode. And uh, simply because we disagree does not mean that we don't disagree respectfully. Yeah, it gets a little boisterous and people, you know, show themselves, you know, we got folk from Detroit, you know. So, you know, you got to have a little of that kind of action. But at the same time, you, we do understand that we love and respect each other then we're allowed our differences. And we take that to the people. What we're saying essentially is look at us. We are different and yet still we are not antagonistic beyond whatever we're dealing with. Uh, after that we love, we shake, we hug. Uh, and then the same thing we're saying to the audience. Uh, you're allowed. And we have set ourselves up here for you to take whatever shots you want at us because we're secure enough to understand what our assignment is and uh, and and Another thing, and I'll close, is that many people already know what their pastors have. They already know where they live. I mean, the pastor's aid insists on making it happen. I mean, my church would get very upset and been upset with me for years because I wouldn't buy a sedan, a new car. And they bought me a Maserati Quattroporte, and I had it for a year. I had uh, 1,100 miles on it. And I had it for 13 months. And I said, what in the world do I need this for? And I sold it and gave them their money back. I said, uh, why are you giving me this? So it's not that many times they shove it on the preacher. They don't want him to go out looking like he's, uh, like he's in poverty. Well, I, we don't want people to think you don't, we don't take care of you. You know, that kind of thing. So, but then on all the other preachers, and I say that many preachers, uh, because they are insecure about what they have and how they got it. You know, I didn't teach any erroneous doctrine to end up being blessed. I taught scripture and I wasn't looking for money. I didn't teach them for money. I don't design my messages to get money. I preach the gospel and people are blessed and people will bless you. It's one of me preaching to 20,000 people. It's 20,000 people trying to make me happy. <laughs> wow, that is, that's, that's an interesting point. Preach to live. Right. He lives to, to preach. Live. There's a difference. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Uh, okay, hold on. And you and you wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a segue. That's the segue to my next question and my last question because they're wrapping me up. Bishop Gibson, you've you've been married for how long? I've been married to be thirty three years in uh, December. Thirty three years. Yes, sir. Bishop, you've been dating for how long? Uh, I haven't been dating for very long. I've had a friend for 17 years who's been in my space. Yeah, I don't know why. you got to define dating. Okay, okay. So, Bishop, uh, Bishop Gibson, should, should, Bishop, should Bishop Jones be married by now? I see. You know what you just asked me? I want you to understand what you just asked me. You said Bishop Gibson. Should Bishop Jones be married by now? I, I'm going to answer that seriously. I can't say... Bishop Jones should be married. I think he made it very clear earlier that he's out of balance. I think that's very honest, very, very nice of him to share that with us. And I respect him. So I'm not saying that he should be married, but I will say this. Bishop, Bishop Jones is a, is a general of the faith. He's a gatekeeper. And in first season, if you notice, he intimated with us that he was thinking about retiring. And when he retires, he's going to have to pass that baton to the younger generation. They're looking at Bishop Jones. I look up to Bishop Jones. One of the sermons I preached 
in our denomination, I'm the Church of God in Christ, on official day, Sunday, in the FedEx forum there, 30,000 people, was a sermon Bishop Jones preached about ignore your situation and seek revelation, the revealed God. I mean, I'm, I'm one of his protégés. Now I was promoted to the purple, and I'm a bishop, so we're, 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 we're fellow brethren now. But my advice to Bishop Jones, I want him to finish strong. I think God has given me wisdom above my peers, and I say that as humble as I know how. And I want to tell Bishop Jones, if he's not going to marry Loretta at this point, sever the relationship. She's a beautiful young lady, and, and I want him to hear this. The Bible, and, and a lot of young men probably in that same predicament, the Bible says a man, and he's all man, cannot take fire in his bosom. He may say, I'm not hot, but that woman is hot. She's a hot woman. She's a beautiful lady. Loretta is a beautiful lady. So David even had a young lady when he was sick to, to, to warm him up. Well, David, this particular one, when he was ill on his deathbed, remember? And they brought the young lady to him. So I'm just saying to Bishop Blake, if you're not going to, I mean Bishop Blake, Bishop Jones. Please don't get Bishop Blake. <laughs> Bishop Blake is my dad in the gospel, that's why. That was a Freudian slip. He's happily married to my wonderful, darling mother in the gospel, Mother Mae Blake. Bishop Blake and then there's the rest of us. <laughs> Bishop Blake is like my father in the gospel. But I would say to Bishop Jones, if he's not going to marry Loretta, the Bible says don't let your good be evil spoken of. And I, I'm from the outside looking in, but I hear a lot from prominent people that are shying away. But if he landed the plane on this relationship, I think some, some severed relationships will begin to heal because some people don't want to associate with the appearance of evil. And maybe he's not doing anything wrong. I take him at his word, but it doesn't look good. And as a man, as intelligent and well-versed as he is, then we ought to adhere and adapt to the scriptures. Well, I won't, I won't, uh, you know, you, we won't, we won't go at it uh, right now. Uh, but, 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 it seems to me as if, and, and I would like, it's, uh, you have been happily married for how long? It'll be 13 years. 13 years of marriage, and you have a beautiful daughter, and it's just a lovely thing. But now, uh, did you marry because you wanted the whole world to have a particular view of you? Or did you marry because that's what both of you mutually consented to out of a burning passion for each other? Uh, did you really care if anybody liked it or didn't like it? No, I didn't. Okay. Well, no I further was, questions. Oh, no. You, didn't continue, you didn't continue to be your boyfriend. No, he didn't continue okay, to be my boyfriend. Okay, so you did marry. Well, he still is right now, but he's But you married. Yes, sir. So his question was, did you marry because you were trying to worry about what people thought about you? If you really listen to that question, you're a Christian woman. Yes. Your husband is a Christian man. I would never have lived with him. And you would never continue that relationship you had with him. If we weren't going to be married. That's my point. So you came into a relationship with marriage on the back of your mind. We both did. Okay, good. Because we were both, we were both, we were both, Loretta, we were both in, and, and up Loretta, in age. And Loretta has marriage on the back of her mind. Okay. Maybe he doesn't. But, but I'm saying, and if he doesn't, because how can two walk together except they agree? How can two walk together? If Loretta has marriage, which he told us earlier, she does, because the relationship switched and changed over time. So the relationship switched in her mind. Now it's up to me to make a decision. Now, do you believe that if I said to Loretta tomorrow, I don't intend to marry you, which she knew going from the beginning that marriage was on my mind. If I said I didn't intend you to marry tomorrow, do you think I would be rid of her? Would she leave? Well, let me tell you, Mr. Jones, you keep hanging around me, I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> okay, Reverend. How to get away or how to get oh. in? Which, whichever you want. Okay. I All can right. show you how to do it. All right. <laughs> well, see, this is what they do. But they shake, they hug, and they love each other even after it's over. But they respect one another's opinions. And tune in to season two, August the 20th, if you want to see closure. And see what the answer will be. <laughs> see what the end was going to be. Or will it be an end? It may go to season seven if he wants to go to heaven. <laughs> Bishop Noel Jones, Bishop Ron Gibson, thank you all for tuning in, and we look forward to season two of The Preachers of L.A.